So you may have heard the news that scientists may have discovered fossil remains that show the destructive consequences moments after the asteroid impact that wiped out the dinosaurs and much of life on Earth. If you're like me, and definitely if you are me, you had one of your most delightful experiences in this new report, that of the exquisite and exhilarating thrill of new discovery. But discovery of a particular kind, the kind of discovery that makes things fall into place, that makes things seem to make sense. Something that you suspected is true is confirmed, and your confidence in your picture of the world is strengthened. And the fact that this thing can be found and known makes you stop and marvel, dumbfounded maybe, and in awe. I am referring to the recent report of the fossil findings by paleontologist Robert De Palma and his team in North Dakota. For a bit of perspective, I remember in 1980 first hearing about the Alvarez hypothesis that an asteroid impact caused the end of the dinosaurs. Before that time, there were a wide range of explanations put forward and little consensus. Climate and ocean changes, a magnetic reversal, even the possibility of a nearby supernova. This extinction event was the most important thing to happen on Earth, at least in the last 66 million years, and at least to living organisms today, because this event dramatically changed the trajectory of life on Earth and led to our existence. Without the extinction event, it is unlikely that we would exist, and dinosaurs would probably still be chewing on leaves and on each other. Was it true, we wondered? Did an asteroid really end the reign of the dinosaurs? Then in the early 1990s, the Chicxulub crater off the Yucatan Peninsula was discovered, and all but the most immovable scientists have signed on to the asteroid impact extinction event. The energy released by the impact of this 10 to 50 mile wide asteroid may be as much as 10 billion Hiroshima's. The damage to life is believed to have been first through a rapid heating of the atmosphere, incinerating exposed living things, and later through a prolonged impact winter. The hypothesized effect of huge amounts of dust and ash and other material thrown up into the atmosphere by the impact, and maybe also all of that burning, blocking the sun's rays, making the planet colder, halting or limiting photosynthesis, and disrupting the food chain. All non-avian dinosaurs and many other species were wiped out. It's not my purpose to go through the evidence for the impact event and through all its specialized, intricate, putative consequences. But suffice it to say that much has been pieced together from looking at the end of a long, long period in Earth's history. The Cretaceous period ended. That's the final period in the 200 million year long Mesozoic era in which dinosaurs thrived. And it ended 66 million years ago when the present era, the Cenozoic era, began. From what evidence have we pieced together the asteroid impact and the mass extinction that ended the Cretaceous? Well, mostly three. First, detailed study of the relevant rocks and their chemistry. The rocks that were deposited in the boundary layer between the end of the Cretaceous and what came next in comparison to the rocks and their chemistries in the layers above and below the boundary layer. And second, the biological changes before and after as seen through fossil evidence, the extinctions of the dinosaurs being the most dramatic piece, but not the only piece. The dinosaurs are ubiquitous in the layers below the event and absent completely in the layers above. And third, the Chicxulub crater and the scientific study of the crater itself and of its worldwide associated manifestations. But somewhere in this vast earth, possibly was preserved some fossilized remnants of this event, lying undisturbed, maybe and maybe not one day, to be uncovered and seen. But who could have anticipated what we saw this past week? If true, it's like an actual snapshot 
from that day 66 million years ago, from that seminal moment in the history of the line that led to us, when almost 200 million years of dinosaur history ended, along with 75% of all species living on Earth at the time. De Palma was looking at deposits from the Hell Creek Formation in North Dakota, which is a site containing rocks of an age that straddle the period just before and after the extinction event. Hell Creek is one of the best and most accessible formations for rocks of this age in North America. The site of the findings within the Hell Formation, called Tanis, was at the time of the Chicxulub impact situated along the banks of an inland sea called the Western Interior Seaway within the still forming North American continent. And at that time, the sea was an extension of the shallow Gulf of Mexico. What does De Palma report? In the narrative of these findings, the Chicxulub impact resulted in massive earthquakes causing powerful seismic waves called sage waves in the water in the inland seaway and possibly in other bodies of water. These waves are similar to what would happen to the water in a bowl if you shook the bowl. They tossed sea and land animals and plants miles inland from the waterway. At the same time, molten microscopic glass formed from the heat and pressure of the impact called tectites or tiny micro tectites millimeters in diameter were raining down on the area after having been ejected from the impact site. Some are seen penetrating sediments. Some impacted tree trunks and were preserved in amber. This lovely image is a microscope slide of micro tectites from the Tanis site. Never before have we had direct fossil evidence of the immediate effects of these events. Although tectites from the event have been found elsewhere in the crater itself, in the general Gulf of Mexico region, perhaps as far away as Haiti and islands off of the country of Colombia. But what De Palma seems to have found are the remains of a moment in time when the effects of the impact devastated the life around Tanis. This image shows a mass of fish from the site. This preserved moment includes freshwater fish and marine mammals smashed together. In some places, fish are preserved in an upright position, oriented in the direction of water flow. Seen here in these images, the top left is the natural image. The top right is colored for clarity, showing numerous fish carcasses. And the bottom shows a magnified view of paddlefish and sturgeon caught up in the cataclysm. The upright position oriented in the direction of flow suggests that they were caught up in a mash of mud and sediment and water instead of the usual configuration for fossilized fish, which is pressed flat. In this striking set of images, microtectites clog the gills of the fish as if they were breathing them in as they tried to get air and also indicating that the fish were alive at the time of the impact. The top left image, A, shows a sturgeon skull. The top right, B, is a magnified image of the x-ray of that sturgeon skull that shows microtectites within the gills. And the bottom images, C and D, are micro-CT images of another fish with microtectites embedded similarly in the gills. Many of the fish are described as showing gaping mouths, in fish usually a sign of tetany, an involuntary contraction of the muscles, which De Palma argues suggests the fish all died from a single cause, suffocation. The authors report that the composition of the tectites match that of other Chicxulub tectites found elsewhere. Other rare findings with full reports forthcoming include preserved remnants of dinosaurs, including triceratops bones, hatchlings and dinosaur eggs with preserved embryos in them, and dinosaur feathers. If these findings are as described, the further papers should be fascinating. Basically what we have here is an entire ecosystem at the moment of its destruction. 
fish and other animals killed, but not scavenged, because presumably the scavengers who would have eaten them were destroyed at the same time. There will be arguments about this for a long time. The science is complicated, and evaluating the material will take a wide range of skills and expertise, more than those of any single individual. Arguments are likely to be made for alternative explanations for at least some of De Palma's conjectures. And these findings are not a comprehensive view of the total extinction event. This is part of the immediate aftermath of the destruction in North America only. It tells us little about what happened elsewhere, and we know that the extinctions were worldwide. If the impact winter hypothesis is correct, that would have followed in the days and months and years after the Tanis event. So is it true? Is this a snapshot of the actual moment that ended the dinosaurs and changed life on Earth forever? Only time and more expertise brought to bear will tell for sure. Initially, it looks remarkably good. It looks highly plausible. For me, this finding is the latest in a phenomenon that I find amazing. One of the most astonishing things about nature is the way it often captures and preserves parts of its own history. More on that in the next video. But rock is especially good at preserving history. Here, in these Tanis fossils, it sure looks like the rocks have captured the dramatic end of the dinosaur era and the most sudden change ever in the direction of life on Earth. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification button to hear about future videos, and thanks a lot for watching.